Wow. <laughs> and he's checked out, folks. He's gone. <laughs> Welcome to another We Are the Seeds interview. My name is Zachary Julian. I'm from the Hickory Apache Nation, and I have a very talented and special guest today. Please introduce yourself. Thank you very much for, for that uh, chance to tell everybody about who I am. My name is Robert Jackson. I'm a uh, harmonica player and I sing with a blues band called Smokestack Lightning. I'm a member of the Gila River Indian community, born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona. I've been playing harmonica since I was about a freshman in high school, you know, and uh, Smokestack Lightning, our band, we started it uh, over 10 years ago and we've been nominated for like a NAMI and then we won the Arizona Blues Showdown two years. Uh, we went to Memphis, Tennessee to participate in the International Blues Challenge. We did that two times, you know, and you know, clearly with the way that things are with the venues right now, we haven't been playing, but uh, yeah, you know, the music was something that's always been close to my heart and it's given me a lot of uh, inspiration over the years to stay creative and stay active, even in times like this. That's, that's, that's amazing, dude. It is, it's so inspiring. Um, I'm going to jump right into it. The, I, I first, the first version I met of you was at We Are The Seeds uh, a few years ago, I believe. Um, and over the years, I've kind of gotten more comfortable around uh, musicians, other musicians like myself, and finally being able to talk to you. Um, listening to your music, the, you and the band as a whole, the, 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 the sound is so tight. It's, it's so pure. And it's, you're one of those bands that's fun to listen to, but also to, to watch. There's, there's a lot of emotion, and, and you, you're into the music. You feel the music. It's fascinating stuff. And if you haven't heard of Smoke Sack Lightning, please check them out the amazing stuff um yeah. how how did that all start you, you're saying you started harmonica in high school like what inspired you to start that okay well when everyone else was exploring their bodies and everyone <laughs> else was trying to figure out who they were in the universe i was playing harmonica so it's kind of funny because um i started playing when i was 14 years old i was a freshman in high school and um uh don't tell anybody this but i was in the marching band I know, I know. It was a it was a low point for me. No, but um, I was I was around a lot of music, and I was listening to jazz and blues, and you know, kids were into all kinds of stuff. And there was this mm -hmm. one guy who played harmonica. He I don't think he had any friends because he would sit in the band room during lunch and play harp, and he was doing like licks from Roseanne, and then he was playing records. Wow. You know, I was just really fascinated by it. And then um, I remember I mentioned it to my dad, and my dad was telling me that he had a friend who played harmonica and he would go sit in with bands and bars and he was like the life of the party and uh on top of that the smithsonian magazine had this feature article about the harmonica mm. and uh i was i was in the library again not the coolest place in high school to hang out but i was in the library and i was opened it up and sure enough after seeing all these signs and kind of getting all these little signals there was this big feature spread article about the harmonica and the origins of it and you know, how it was mass produced and what it uh, did in American music and just kind of how it's gone through the different phases, you know, uh, during the different periods of like, you know, the pre-war and then all in the blues era and then all these different types of music um, that benefited from the harmonica and the different types and all the artists. And so I just said, you know, like, it, like any other teenager, if I needed something, I asked my parents. So I asked my mom to buy me a harmonica and um, it was a Marine band and it took me about a year to kind of get the hang of it. I was doing like, Oh Susanna and kind of like old time tunes. And I didn't really know much about the blues until I picked up a, uh, again, I checked out a little how to harmonica book. I think it was like the Mel Bay one, you know, those instructional books with like a cartoon on the cover. <laughs> so I picked, I picked it up and then there was this little section about the blues and it had this one little riff um, and it was explaining second position, which is what harmonica players uh, mainly play. And then so I did this two note lick and it was just like, bang, 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 bang. You know, my head was just like spinning. I was like, this is what I was, this is what it's supposed to sound like, man. This is what I want to do. And I don't have a lot of musicians in my family, um, really. I mean, I know they like to sing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. After a few, but other than that, <laughs> There was no bands. I mean, I had a cousin, but I, I didn't know 
what he was involved in. So the blues and the harmonica, it became like my own thing, you know. And when I was at that age, when you're looking for things to be interested in and when things speak to you on their own, you know, that's when I really kind of uh, just, you know, nurtured that bond that I had with this music. And like I said, I was 14 years old at the time. I'm 39 years old now. And so, you know, it's been with me every step of the way. And uh, I'm not I'm not really the type of guy that when I watch like the Grammys, I'll be like, oh, I know that band. I know that singer and stuff. You know, a lot of the things is outside of what I listen to now because, I mean, I'm still stuck in the 50s and the 60s and then, you know, the current artists that are playing this music. And so it just combines everything that I like. You know, it's history. It's It references a very, you know, unfortunate period in our past as a country. And uh, here I am, this uh, half native, half Mexican dude who lives in the desert. And, you know, I made it a big part of my life. So, yeah, ever since then, when I was 14 years old, I've been playing it. And I started to sit into jam sessions around town. And I got to find out there's a lot of people here who knew the music, who respected the music. And in about 2010, I guess, or maybe 2009, 2009 that's when I started playing with the guys in Smokestack. I had knew, I'd known them, you know, kind of here and there. I, known, I knew the drummer, Pat, because uh, I played with him when I was like 18 years old. And so they were in between bands and they said they wanted a, another uh, artist to go along with them because they were going to do a three piece. And then so I, I jumped in and, you know, stayed down and dirty. And here we are 10 years later. Wow. It's so cool to meet musicians like you who, <clears throat> it's, it's innate in them, the, the art and the, the passion. Um, and when a, a specific sound of the timbre of an instrument calls to you and it takes time. I mean, the same thing happened with me, a piano. I was like, yeah, I'll play piano. And then some years later, I was like, wow, like this, this is my instrument. This is, this is the way I can express myself. And congratulations on all your accomplishments and awards with the, the music. I mean, it, it's, like I said, it's amazing stuff. The, the solos you do is so good. Um, so with the music, how, where did you, where did it turn into photography? Because you have an eye, my friend. You have a way of capturing people that a lot of photographers, uh, they kind of fail at. Not all of them. I'm just saying a vast majority of them. Where you're able to catch a soul. You're able to catch movement. Um, and it, it is beautifully portrayed. What, 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 what turned you into photography? You know what, man? The photo thing is a quite a different um, introduction than music was for me because I... I kind of romanticized that moment of when I felt like I was destined to be a harmonica player, you know, and I'm not clearly the best out there, you know, I'm, I mean, I've been doing it a while and I'm experienced or whatever, but as far as photography goes, um, my, my older brother started a photo business, just a small time thing. He, we were taking pictures on the reservation. And so, um, you know, I, I was a part of his uh, little company and I would just go out with with him to jobs and just take pictures. I had no clue what I was doing. This was in the days of film. And, you know, I just basically was stuck on auto and I didn't know what was uh, a good picture and what wasn't. And then he, he made this very terrible decision that I never forgave him, but he went to law school. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> yes. And he, and he left, he kind of left the photo stuff, you know, kind of to me. And so I, at the time when I was looking for a major, I decided to major in art as a photographer because at the time um, I didn't really have a lot of drive or motivation to do really anything that uh, other than, you know, maybe just find something creative and hopefully I can develop since then. So I got my uh, Bachelor of Fine Art from ASU and then um, I got an online MFA degree from Academy of Art University. So the photo thing has been more of a work in progress it's been more of an uphill thing and it's a it's a humbling thing it's an expensive thing yes, but it is. um but for any artist out there you know that you have to invest in uh not only your craft you have to be dedicated you know you have to be willing to kind of follow those contours that go up and down in the whole learning process man and it's humbling you know it's kind of um been a, a source of you know gratification and another creative outlet because when i'm not doing gigs or say I'm, I'm taking photos, you know, they kind of, um, uh, they kind of help me get through whatever I'm going on, but in their own way. And so in my personal, uh, life, you know, photography has been a big part of it since I was about 18 years old and I worked for the Gila river Indian news. So, you know, picking wow. up a camera and going out into the field and taking pictures of the community, you know, it's, it's like the best job to have. So yeah, yeah the photo thing, it's, it's something that I'm, I'm very serious about too. And, 
you know, I, I, I look at it from the perspective of fine art, but also, you know, as a documentary, you know, and all the other ways that uh, we use photography in our life, because as you know, the mediascape, it's changing, man. And, yeah. and like, there isn't a second that goes by that we're not inundated with some kind of imagery. <laughs> And, uh, you know, the way advertisers and stuff have kind of manipulated, you know, our senses to think a certain way, you know. And so I'm kind of conscious of that, too, when I take a picture, you know, like, what am I really saying? Does it express who I am or am I just kind of following someone else's lead? So, yeah, thanks for those um, compliments. You know what? I had a really cool uh, time when I took pictures at the We Are The Seeds. There was this one dude I took a picture of. He had this really cool hat, man. He was kind of like a little guy. He was playing piano. <laughs> and... I got him in front of the camera and man, it was just lights, camera, action. So, you know, when you get models like that and people that are willing to share that moment with you, you know, that makes all the difference. Oh, well, that's very kind of you to say, sir. Um, and well said on, on, on speaking. Uh, one of the things I've been doing is I've been kind of jumping out and doing a lot of filming and I'm filming everything. It, it, it's ridiculous. And, and I understand what you're saying when my music, like this time of year, I have a hard time writing. Uh, it kind of picks up during the fall um but with the filming i'm doing it all the time and it really is another great outlet and that's it's one of the things i believe in as artists you, you put as many eggs as you can in different baskets just don't put it all in one kind of diversify um with the we are the seeds you did these great portraits for we are the seeds uh, um was there what did you think about that how, how was that setting up on the outside and watching everybody come and go like how did the people talk to you through their portraits? You know what, man, the, um, I'll never forget those couple of days. It, uh, it went, it went by, you know, very quickly. Yeah. And I just, I just felt like I was really embedded in that whole scene, you know, because you know, the, we are the seeds project. I mean, this is probably, uh, the way a true artist community should be, you mm -hmm. know, reflected in our society and uh, us as native people, you know, art was used for many things that had a function. It wasn't just something we would hang on a wall or, you know, display, you know, it was a part of uh, growing up and, and understanding the different stages in life. So when I was sitting there trying to meet these different people and get their photos, I mean, for one, you want to get all the technical stuff uh, as far as like, you know, exposure and lighting and those yeah. kinds of things. And it was the way I had set up, um, I had put a canopy or there was a canopy there and I, <laughs> I brought all my gear and my lights and stuff and, it, I was kind of freaking out on the inside, you know, and I had my, my wife there, my daughter, there, my mom was there, you know, so I, I mean, I couldn't mess up. But um, yeah, one by one, you know, I, I started with one person's portrait and then another and then another. And then, you know, it, it, it really felt like it was just uh, an organic thing that I was able to share with all these artists and stuff. So I thought a lot about how I wanted them to come across and you know, but a lot of times I think you understand this, like maybe from the performance side, you know, you can think, you can pre prepare, you can anticipate, you know, you can try to play out all these different scenarios in your mind. But until you get there and you're right in front of that person, you know, and you either have to, uh, you know, either troubleshoot or maybe everything goes right. You know, it's just it's just all outside of your hands at some point and you got to kind of go with it. So I wanted to capture that positive side of them, but I also wanted to um, somehow inform the viewer that you know, we were all together, we were all as one, and we came together for those first few days, and these are those unique people that I got to meet along the way. Yeah, it's, it's uh, being there for those uh, two days, uh, I heard nothing but compliments about you, um, how you made people feel comfortable. You didn't feel like your picture's being taken. I hate having my picture taken, honestly, even though I put on that persona, I, I, it's uncomfortable. But So dealing with you, it was very nice. You were just like, be yourself, just let me capture you. and. You don't get that many uh, much from photographers. Um, and I'll put some links in the uh, video as well so people can check out your photography, and the band, and what, what you do, all the amazing things you do. Uh, so the question I have for you next is, what would you say to the, the youth, the young natives who, who are starting out, who are look, getting their you know, grandpa's camera, or their mom's camera, or their dad's camera, right. or, or getting their first harmonica or guitar? How, how, what, do you, what inspiration do you have for them? What motivation do you have? I would say stay in school, yes. give back that camera, give back that instrument, <laughs> no, don't follow in my footsteps, no, um, you, you know what, I, <laughs> I'm still, here's the thing, I'm still in the, um, I'm still on the other side when it comes to uh, 
when it comes to advice, you know, I'm still on that journey myself. Mm. And um, I'm, you, you said that kid that's picking up that camera for the first time or picking up that harmonica from the first, for the first time, you know, I'm, that's still me. And that's uh, kind of how I still look at it. And even though I've maybe have done certain things and have a certain amount of experience, uh, I still understand that learning is a lifelong thing. Yeah. And so I have a, a chance to continue on and finish what I started and, you know, just not look back, but um, to really kind of think about your question, you know, that kid who's picking up that harmonica, they got to understand that um, there is a chance for them to, you know, get good and express themselves and do that kind of thing. But um, a lot of it requires uh, discipline, you know, and yeah. what you, you know, you'll get, a, you'll get exposed at some point and the harmonica or the instrument, whatever, it'll tell you whether or not you're either playing enough or whatever. And, and so, you know, it's just something that's might be frustrating at some point, but then the rewards are going to be pretty mm -hmm. great because then you'll get the hang of it and then you'll get to meet new people and those kinds of things. And the harmonica, people may think of it as just a, a blues instrument or, or something for like folk music, but, uh, you know, it's, it's extremely versatile. Uh, and you're only limited by like your imagination, right? So yeah. if you're able to kind of put it all together, you know, you can be as good a harmonica player as you ever was. And the photo thing, again, that's like hard work, man. But the, the part about photography is it can be kind of intimidating, you know, because there's a lot of gear, there's a lot of different uh, tech that's coming out, you know, mm. and then you see these exorbitant prices that are attached to camera bodies, camera lenses, filters, you know, not, not to mention the uh, computers, the software, you know, and even all the little accessories that you didn't even think you would need. Next thing you know, you're buying like spending 80 bucks a pop just for like little cords and stuff like that. So I know that side of it can be a little deterring, but um, you know, the, whatever camera you have, use that camera to the best, you know, of your abilities. If you have like a, like a, a, a film camera, an old Canon or something, or, or something that was dug out of a trash bin or whatever, you know, that could still lead you to some greater stuff because a lot of these things, and you know, this as a musician, when you're buying gear, you just don't like show up on the first day and then you just, you know, you're hooked up with everything. You know, it's, it's little by little, man. And it's, it's, it's by degrees that you're able to accumulate all these things and you'll start to realize you'll only buy things that you need and you'll be out in the field or you'll be trying to achieve a certain thing artistically. And then that'll tell you, okay, you know, maybe it is time to invest in this kind of thing. And so I would just really kind of uh, pay attention to your own path, pay attention to your own progress, try not to get caught up in who's doing what and who's the hot shot and that kind of thing. Because, um, you know, that could make you, uh, that, that could kind of sour the mood, you know, especially if you are making your own progress, but you're too caught up in what the next guy's doing to realize it. So, so yeah, man, if you're, if you're really into this stuff, um, maybe wait a while because I'm still trying to like do my thing. And once I'm over the hill, then go ahead, by all means, start taking pictures and play harmonica. Yeah. Yeah. Well said, my friend. It's always nice to have a conversation with a fellow artist. Um, it was kind of on, you and I are literally kind of on the same paths. Just, you know. I could tell, I could tell looking right at you, man. I feel like we've been living a parallel life. I, like, it's, it's, yeah. I, looked at, I look outside my window and I'm like, man, there's got to be another person like me out there somewhere, you know, and there you are. But I don't know what's going on in your room, man. I see this. Did you pay your light bill or what's going on? It's like yeah. dark in there. It's dark in there. Yeah. It's, 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 there's a huge storm outside actually. It's like shut off everything and I have my light on and that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Man, this has been the hottest month on record in it's Arizona. Been, it's been in sticky. Phoenix. Yeah. It was like 118 degrees yesterday, man. It's just like, it's just like crazy. And there you are, you, you, you're mocking me by wearing your nice little knitted hat. Dude, you I get your, cold. You got your long sleeve. Meanwhile, I'm like burning up over here. You can't tell, but... <laughs> I'm actually like only clothed from here up. That's how hot it is. I'm, I'm sitting on a bag of ice. You can't even tell. That's awesome. So no, thanks it, a lot. Thanks no, a lot for running it for me, man. Yeah, well, it's Albuquerque, man. The weather is, is weird here. It's, it's going to be like low 60s tonight. It's insane. Oh, man. I'm in. Okay. I'm leaving this chat. Right? <laughs> I'm out of here. You take care. Of <laughs> um, well, go ahead and tell uh, the people. Like I said, I'll put the links for where they can find you. Okay. Um, uh, let them know where they can find you. Right. Well, um, so we talked, we, we, I just want to like give a shout out to my band or whatever real quick. Yeah, yeah of course. Because, please. you know, this isn't a one man show. So this is, yeah. uh, this is us right here. This was at a festival a few years ago. 
that's me in the middle with the hat on and the glasses. I know it looks like I was there to buy drugs, but no, I was, <laughs> I was there actually to play. It's a nice hat. Yeah, that's Rick on guitar, that's Mark on bass, and that's uh, Big P on drums. And so that's us right there, Smokestack Lightning. And um, I know you guys are more fascinated with me, so here's some more pictures of me. <laughs> yes, very handsome man there, yes. Good yeah, stuff. So, so I, these are for sale too, so I can like sign my name, I can put on some lipstick and go like that for you guys. <laughs> um, and so uh, www.facebook.com forward slash SSL Blues. So there's, you know, some of our stuff on there. Again, you know, we've kind of gone dark because of the pandemic. And we've had a couple chances to maybe get out there and test the waters with the uh, current public health crisis. You know, it's just been difficult. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for us to get back on that stage, but I want to do it when the time is right. So, yeah, if you want to check out um, facebook.com forward slash SSL Blues, you'll find some stuff there. And then I also have a website, which is... Um, <laughs> yeah roberto jackson photo.com i think so um so yeah so go on there and then there's like my um i'll send you a link um zag and then you could kind of put it up there for me so okay yeah you know and that's that's a lot of my uh kind of like uh, some of my artistic projects i've been doing my thesis is on there my portraits i do in the community and you know some other artists that i kind of gravitate towards they always make great um photo subjects and stuff yeah. so um so yeah, that's the whole other side of me. And then, um, you know, there's some other things that uh, hopefully ne maybe next time we get to chat that I can kind of share with you guys. And, you know, hopefully by then I can see everyone in person and yes. we can kind of vibe and chill and enjoy each other's company. Yeah, I, you're doing amazing. What, what you did for We Are The Seeds, those portraits. Um, and for those of you who are watching, we're, we're, we're premiering something that's pretty special uh, in a ne couple of months. And uh, Robert here was huge huge part of that and uh, yeah i was thank I you was, so much i was the man definitely <laughs> it was all about me the pictures yeah. are gorgeous my friend thank you so well, much you know what i mean like i said i had a, i had good models like i said there was this one cat he was playing piano and he was uh wasn't it he was just doing all kinds of crazy stuff he was banging the keys with his head like this i, I pretty much was yeah 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 he was throwing bottles at the audience yeah. <laughs> he just he really kind of blew my mind and i it was it was music it was performance art and yeah it was just a whole trip so i got to catch up with that cat sooner or later yeah man i hope to see you on the stage soon again yeah no doubt so um what's that you want to hear me play harmonica you want me to you yeah. want me to play something you want to play riff is go that, for it is that, is that what you is that what you said uh, i did i believe i did i think it, that was some there was some uh Nonverbal communication he was giving yes. me, right, guys? It was yeah. binary winks. Yeah. Yeah, he was letting me know. So, um, <laughs> so let's pretend we're out in the woods. It's a campfire or something. Yeah. Or, or maybe we're like in Mississippi. You know, we're in, um, we're in Clarksdale, Mississippi, or whatever. We're by a railroad yeah. station or something like that. And you know, so a lot of you guys know the history of the blues, right? You know, it kind of started um, in the deep south. You know, in the Mississippi Delta, that kind of mm -hmm. area, and it was the the cultural music of the people that worked in plantations, you know, and all the descendants of slaves. Yeah. And so this was the music that they had adopted in these new surroundings. You know, they were there for, you know, however many hundreds of years by that point. And so they took all those influences and they really created their own language um, and their own way to communicate by playing this music called the blues. And no one knows exactly like when it was invented or that kind of thing, but uh, it, you know, became a, a dominant force in music. And, you know, it was really a, a way for uh, the United States and American culture to get exported to all these countries, you know, and it may not be the, the, the hot music on your radio dial nowadays, you know what I mean? But you can't really deny the impact that it had mm -hmm. on the uh, music as a whole, our culture. And I know Native Americans, they're really hip to, to blues and that kind of thing. So when it came to, uh, you know, um, blues for me, you know, I just really appreciate the humble roots of it all. And, you know, the virtuosity that it takes to kind of perform this kind of music man and you can't really fake it as you know it's something that you know either you do because you love it or you know you might as well not do it at all so here's a i'm just gonna like play what's off the top of my head okay okay I, i'm i'm not on any like substances or whatever so <laughs> i'm not i'm just gonna i'm just gonna play you know and i'm gonna i, I saw that coffee over there yeah well it's <laughs> caffeine right 
caffeine has another crazy history when it comes to indigenous people. We'll get into that later. Uh, uh. Okay, so um, here we go. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and he's checked out, folks. He's gone. <laughs> That's amazing, my friend. The harmonies, uh, the cadence you built up there is gorgeous. Kudos to you, my friend. Well, well don't tell me. Tell this guy. <laughs> and his brother. <laughs> just imagine, just imagine with these guys how that would have sounded. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Seriously, check their stuff out, people. It's, it's amazing stuff. It's, it's beautiful. Oh, check this guy out. You need to check out his stuff, man. He's a, he's a singer. He's a songwriter. He's an artist, man. And every time he touches that piano, you know, it's more than just him playing a note. It's, it's, a, it's a conversation, man. He's, he's creating, a, you know, this whole tapestry of sound and emotion. And once you hear him and you experience that for the first time, you know, you'll never forget it. So Thank I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interview you next time. We're going to the, we're gonna okay. get to the bottom of what makes you tick because... <laughs> Because you're in this high and mighty position where you get to tell me, yeah, give me all your, your uh, darkest secrets, Rob. But I think, I think there's some interesting things that the public would like to know uh, about you and, and your secret life of music. So we're going to get into that soon, guys. Stay tuned. All right, all right brother. That sounds good, man. Well, <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the interview now. So did you want to talk about the coffee real quick? Oh, yeah. So basically, I've been a coffee drinker probably mm -hmm. since about 2004, okay? When I gave up alcohol, I needed something else to drink, yeah. you know, that would kind of perk me up. So I switched to coffee and I've been through all the brands. I've been to the Starbucks. I've been to the Dutch Brothers. I've I bought every basically uh, expensive kind of roast you can think of. So now I'm at a point in my life. I'm 39 years old. I drink the, band, the Safeway brand, right? So I go to the, I get the big bag. It's like $12.99. I use my own little hand press and I make my coffee. And mind you, it's seven o'clock here in phoenix right now and it was like 112 13 today and i'm still drinking coffee this is the cut look at let's see see yeah so raise up your glasses you know and and go ahead and bend the elbow of the yeah of some of this black medicine right here no <laughs> so um no i knew i had to i needed something to keep up with you man because i know you you're like a ferrari and once you get going out the out the blocks and it's hard to keep up with you so yeah man so um no man i just really appreciate the opportunity because uh it may seem like I'm kind of overexcited and maybe I'm overdoing no, it a little bit, but this is fine. just a, this is just a chance for me to, you know, kind of meet someone that I had a chance to, you know, have a, a couple, um, you know, encounters with, with we are the seeds and it reminded me of those good times we had back yeah. in August. And I unfortunately, it, yeah, unfortunately the way things are now, it doesn't look like it's going to really be going down like mm -hmm. it did in the past, but that doesn't mean that uh, we can't use technology to our advantage and still kind of talk to each other and stuff. So, yeah, to all your listeners or viewers out there and whatever, you know, I hope you guys are staying safe and, um, you know, just kind of uh, continue to stay strong and stay dedicated and keep your loved ones close, man, because, you know, things will get better. Um, you can trust me on that one. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this concludes another great interview with uh, We Are The Seeds. Yes. Please take care of yourself, Robert. It's good to see you. Thank you.